chapter 2, verse 15 is where we find my text. And it reads as follows, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I rejoice at his word as one that finds great spoil. He, there really wasn't much of a competition. He triumphed over them in it. He made a show of them openly. I rejoice in this message. You know, when the gospel, we can, if we talk about this present world from the perspective of the gospel, it's good news because this world's going to pass away. If we talk about our, our life past that we're ashamed of now from the perspective of the gospel, then it's good news because it's been, it's been put away. We can talk about our future and it's good news from the gospel. We can talk about there's a, the gospel is good news. So we can, when the Holy Spirit talks about principalities and powers in heavenly places that we wrestle against, it's good news because Jesus has spoiled them. Amen. <clears throat> now, if men, if, if the Lord would just suddenly, even briefly... Just pull back throughout the world the, the veil that separates the seen from the unseen. And if men were just able, just for a moment, to get a glimpse of these principalities and powers that are roaming to and fro throughout the whole earth, you know, men would live a lot differently. If men were able to see the forces that are against us, that Jesus has spoiled, then they're their choices in life would be a lot different. Maybe the friends they associate with would change. The activities that they take pleasure in would suddenly change. If, they, if, if suddenly the unseen became visible just, just for a moment. You know, Jesus said that when, uh, when the, the seed is sown on all different grounds and that uh, shallow soil or that, that the, the soil on the path that it doesn't when people hear the word and they don't understand it, the devil comes immediately and takes away that which was sown. Yeah, you know, that, that makes me think that the devil attends church too. He takes away that seed that is sown when it's not understood. And if men could see the, the demonic activity throughout the whole world, it would make people think differently about their lives. If they could see that the devil transforms himself into an angel of light. And so when he comes to tempt, when he comes to destroy, when he comes to steal, when he comes to, uh, to kill, then he doesn't represent himself as he really truly is. He, transform, he masquerades as an angel of light. And he still does today. He works by subtlety. He works by stealth. He works with deception. He transforms himself. And so do, the, so do his Ministers, If men were just able to see the unseen forces that we wrestle against, they would see that the entire world is a, is a, plat, is a stage of competition where evil is competing for the souls of men, where the devil is competing for the affections of men, for the attention of men, as well as the, as the Lord through his ministers. We're living in a world of competition. Peter, Jesus told Peter, Satan hath desired to have you. He told Peter that because Peter didn't know. You'll be sifted as wheat because Peter didn't know. He was, he was unaware of the, the activity teeming around him. And earlier, Peter took him aside and said, Lord, may it never, it will never be so to you. And, and Jesus didn't say, get behind me, Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. In Revelation chapter 12, <clears throat> the, uh, the spirit represents the earth uh, as, a, as a place where Satan has been uh, cast out. And the, the Holy Spirit says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Because the devil has come down to you, full of wrath, knowing that he has but a short time. But he doesn't tell us that he has but a short time. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. He's come down full of wrath to make war with the remnant of her seed and them that keep the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit had to tell us in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
We wrestle against principalities and against powers in heavenly places. We're engaged in, in a cosmic struggle, not in a psychological struggle. Yeah. We're engaged in a spiritual warfare, not a carnal warfare. Yeah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not a physical combat. It's a spiritual combat. The Holy Spirit had to reveal it to us because the combat is in the unseen realms. Daniel, you remember when Daniel prayed 21 days? And after 21 days, the angel appeared to him and he said that, that, that there was a prince in the heavenly places that withstood him. Daniel didn't have, he didn't have any idea the, the struggle and the battle, the confrontation that took place in the heavenly places that was actually attributed to his prayers. But he persevered in his prayers 21 days and help came. <laughs> help came and, got, and, got, and the answer to his prayer came through. Oh, if we, were, if we were just able to see, just, just for a moment, the forces that are teeming against the people of God, the principalities and powers that are in heavenly places. Jesus had a short conversation in, Matt, in uh, Mark chapter 5 with that. He said, what's your name? The, de the demon that he was casting out he says, what is your name? He said, legion, for we are many. And the, that demon besought him. To not send him out of the region. It indicates that there is something there in that region, that country, that he preferred. He didn't want to leave. But you notice also the submission that, that was indicated between in, in that dialogue. Please don't send us out. He besought him because that legion knew that he would have to obey if Jesus said to go out of that country. There was something in that region that... that he didn't want to lose. He didn't want to give it up. He wanted to stay in that, that area of, uh, to inhabit and to continue to operate in that area. If men were just able to see what, take, what takes place in the unseen realms. In Revelation chapter 2, two of the churches that Jesus sent the letters to, one in Pergamos, he said, to, to, the, to a church in Pergamos, he said, I know where you dwell, where Satan's seat is. It's, it's, it's kind of... That's kind of jarring, isn't it? He's writing to his people, and he says, I know where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. It must not have looked that way. There, was, there wasn't a sign as you on the highway leading into the city, the center of Satan's seat. But all the while, that's where his seat was. In, in the same chapter to the uh, church at Smyrna, he said that there, there was a synagogue of Satan. Those... This, that ought not to be a synagogue of Satan. The synagogues were places where the law and the prophets were read, where the people were exhorted. In a synagogue is where Jesus stood up and asked for the scroll of Isaiah and began his ministry by reading that Isaiah chapter 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That was in a synagogue. And in Smyrna, there was a synagogue of Satan. It obviously didn't appear that way. That's why Jesus had to tell them. It's a synagogue of Satan. Peter tells us to be sober and be vigilant because of these things. Your adversary, the devil, walketh around seeking whom he may devour. That means he can't devour just whoever he wills. He's seeking whom he may devour because not everyone's accessible. He's seeking whom he may devour. Remember in Job's day, he, the Lord asked him, where have you been? And the devil said, walking to and fro about the earth. He's still doing that today, brother. He's walking to and fro about the earth. He knew that there was a hedge around Job and he couldn't get to him. He obviously had tried. He knew that he couldn't get to him. He was not able to devour him. He's seeking whom he, whom he may devour, walking about in the earth. You know, at the very beginning of the church, in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, uh, Peter gave him a chance, and he said, why hath Satan filled thine heart? Yeah. At the very beginning of the church, Satan, he didn't, have, he didn't have any shame to attack. Right at the beginning of the church, he filled uh, that, that heart of Ananias and Sapphira. They agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord, and Satan filled his heart at the very beginning of the church. In Luke chapter 22, Satan entered into Judas. He was one of the 12. One of the 12. That's when Ju Judas went out and it was night. When he went and betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. In the inner circle, 
that Jesus chose of the twelve, yet one of you is a devil. If, if people were just able to see the forces that are against us. Even of Paul, the apostle, the one who labored more abundantly than, than all of them, in to his, the second letter that he wrote to the Thessalonians, he said, we, we tried several times to get to you, but in chapter 2, verse 18, he said, but Satan hindered us. Well, why didn't Paul just take authority over that situation? And just, he confessed. He, Paul was just being honest. We tried to come, and Satan hindered us. And this was a chief apostle. If men were just able to see what was taking place, but haven't we from these texts been able to begin to see the forces that are against us? The Lord has not left us ignorant. Paul, has said, Paul said multiple times, I would not have you ignorant. And Paul was laboring together with the Lord when he said that. Paul didn't want people ignorant because the Lord doesn't want people ignorant. Just look at how much the Lord has revealed to us. He would not have us to be ignorant, brethren. We should not be ignorant of these things. He has spoiled principalities and powers. So the Lord has pulled back the veil so that between the seen and the unseen. And we are not ignorant of his devices. We can see that he'll tempt even one of the apostles. We can see that he'll tempt uh, even at the, the very foundation of the church, the first generation, so to speak, of the church, he'll enter in. Where, wherever there's opportunity, he will enter in. He'll come in and take away the seed that was sown immediately. He'll come and take it away. Amen. So we are seeing the activity that is against us. Not only that's against us, but here's the gospel, is that the activity that we're seeing that's against us, they've been spoiled. He has spoiled, having spoiled principalities and powers. The Lord Jesus is not struggling against the devil today. We wrestle against principalities and powers in heavenly places. Jesus does not. He has spoiled them. Here's the way I like to think of it. The devil is the spoiled. We are the spoil. Jesus is the spoiler. He, he, he spoiled the devil and God, when he got us, he has spoiled principalities and powers. Even when the Lord was in, in this world, in the body, he began to open up. So many things that the Lord did when he was here on the earth, they were, they were like parables of what he was going to do when he reached the right hand of God. He multiplied bread and fed the hungry. He's multiplying. He said, I am the bread of life. He opened the eyes of blind. He's opening the blind eyes today. He cast out demons they knew there was no problem none no demon brother given is where i heard this he's no demon ever jumped on jesus like he he would take the little boy and throw him into water throw him into the fire to destroy him but no no demon ever confronted jesus physically he cast them out and they obeyed these this is like a there was one that the apostles they couldn't couldn't cast him out and he came, he came to them and said, how long shall I, shall I be with you? And he cast, cast the demon out of the little boy. And, and the apostle said, why couldn't we cast him out? And he said, is this kind only comes out by fasting and prayer. It was a different, different kind. <laughs> different kind of demon. This kind can only come out by fasting and prayer. But he had no problems. There was no. The, one of them came out and said, we know who you are. The Holy One of God. And they besought him, torment us not. You know, everybody in heaven knew who Jesus was. Everybody under the earth knew who Jesus was. It was only in the earth that people didn't know who Jesus was. He spoiled principalities and powers. So, see, no man can spoil the strong man's house unless he first bind the strong man. And then he shall spoil his house. And so Jesus initiated this epic conflict between himself and the devil. And when he entered the strong man's house, and he bound him, and he spoiled, he spoiled his house. There wasn't really a struggle. There was just a binding. Amen. He bound the strong man, and he spoiled his house. Now think about this. When he entered into his house, he entered by death. He entered the strong man's house by dying. And so at his lowest point, 
he spoiled our enemy. When he died, he spoiled our enemy. Now, I, I like that truth because now we don't have a dead Savior. We have a living Savior. If he, Romans 5 in, introduces this truth. He says, if we were, we, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, look at what Jesus accomplished in his death. How much more shall we be saved by his life? Jesus' work didn't end in the world. When he said, uh, it is finished, he meant he, it, he's dying. His, his work in the earth was done, but his work wasn't done. He s- went and sat down at the right hand of God. The work Jesus is doing now is greater than the work that he did in the world. Amen. Spoil is a term of war. It's a term of conflict. Another word that comes to mind is plunder or uh, to, to lay waste. One of the technical definitions is to strip. That is, the spoil is taken by force. It's not, spoil is not a gift from your enemy. Spoil is what you took from your enemy against his will. You're, the, he, has been, he has been spoiled. Spoil is a trophy of victory. After the conflict, the spoil is evidence of victory. He has triumphed. He has won He made a show of them openly by displaying, Behold, I and the children that thou hast given me. This is the spoil. The spoil of victory. He spoiled the principalities and powers. When Israel left Egypt in in, uh, Exodus chapter 3, the the Lord instructed the people through Moses to have all all the people ask their neighbors, have the women ask their neighbors uh, for jewelry and earrings and, and clothes, and you will spoil the Egyptians. So when they left, they took all these things. Took all, they, they spoiled Egypt. They took all, the, all these precious metals, all of these um, uh, valuable uh, garments, and they, just, and they walked out. They spoiled their enemies. In Judges chapter 14, uh, Samson had given this riddle to the 30 men, and he wouldn't tell anybody what it meant. And you remember, his wife kept, kept nagging him and nagging him. You haven't told, what do you hate me? And he, and after, through the whole feast, Samson finally, he finally gave in and the riddle got back to the 30 men. And, and so he, he uh, in anger, he went out and threw, he uh, slew 30 men and took their garments and gave those 30 garments from the slain to these 30 men that had uh, gotten his, the, the, uh, his riddle through his, through his wife. He spoiled. He, this is the spoil that he, uh, that he took. He didn't go ask for the garments. He slew them and took it as spoil. So in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15, the Holy Spirit, verse 14, the Holy Spirit tells us that he, the Lord destroyed him that had the power of death. When he descended into the lower parts of the earth, Jesus didn't ask for the spoil. He destroyed him that had the power of death. He came back with the keys of hell and of death. He didn't just take the captives out of captivity. He took captivity captive. He didn't just take the spoil out of the house. He took the keys to the house. He has the keys of hell and of death. He spoiled the principalities and powers. In Isaiah chapter 61, that that text that he read, he said, this day is this prophecy fulfilled in your hearing that was proclaim liberty to the captives he took spoil and the opening of prison to them that are bound he spoiled the prison and if the son shall make you free ye shall be free indeed in acts chapter 26 the lord had told paul or saul at that time saul of tarsus on the the conversion on the road to damascus he said i'll i'll uh I'll send you as a light to the Gentiles and to turn them from the power of Satan unto God. We've been turned from the power of Satan unto God. Brethren, the devil is not like a pseudo enemy. He had power. In fact, Paul says that he had taken us captive at his will. He took captives and he wouldn't let his prisoners go free. The prophet says he would not. He would not let his prisoners go free. So Satan is not just an allegory. He had power over us. He is an enemy. He said, the, the, the devil, your enemy, prowls around as a roaring lion. But our enemy has been spoiled by, by our Lord. <clears throat> In fact, spoiled so thoroughly 
That it, to Timothy, when Paul wrote to Timothy in the second letter, chapter 2, verse 26, he gave, he gave this word about teaching that, that uh, perhaps God would give them repentance that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. The, the Lord has so thoroughly spoiled principalities and powers that when he makes you free, you shall be free indeed, and then you'll, you'll so follow after the Lord that you'll recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. Amen. Not because you're so strong, it's because he's so spoiled. Amen. And so the devil has to... See, when you resist, he'll flee. And so... When you recover yourselves, God gives you repentance. You recover yourselves out of the snare of the devil. There's nothing he can do except let you walk out. Now, life teaches us that he, he, won't, just, he won't just leave you alone. But he has to let you walk out because he's so spoiled. Now, if we were, if we were able to tune in and listen to the dialogue between <clears throat> some, some of the demonic discussions that happen in the lower places of the earth we, we'd hear something like boy things sure aren't like they used to be <laughs> we'd hear things like boy in the in the old days it sure was a heyday we could take them we could snare them and we can hold them back in the old day before before the lord of glory came to the house and took our keys well things sure have been different since then He's proclaimed liberty to the captives. <clears throat> now, this question has to be asked, and it has to be answered. If the devil has been spoiled, then why do we deal so much with him? Our enemies have been spoiled, but we are told that we wrestle against principalities and powers in heavenly places, and that we must put on the whole armor of God. And so we, here's the truth of the matter, brethren. We're wrestling against a spoiled enemy. We are engaged in a good fight of faith, in the good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life. We have to, as Paul told Timothy, we must keep that good thing that, the, that has been delivered to us by the, because otherwise some man would take your crown, like Jesus said. And so there, we have to reconcile this fact that Jesus has spoiled principalities and powers that we wrestle against, yet we are still wrestling against them. Life will teach you anybody with, a, with an honest heart has to conclude that we're not done with the devil. Your own, your own experience of temptation and of fighting, wrestling, your, uh, we have to quench the fiery darts of the of the of the devil even if the apostle paul said when i will to do good evil is present with me so see here's here's the uh, here, here's the truth of the matter the lord has designed things in this redemptive economy such that he is actually perfecting us in the good fight of faith he has left the same as was mentioned earlier today, as the Lord has left sufferings for us to fill up, he's left a fight for us. And in, in the fight, things come off that otherwise wouldn't come off unless we were fighting. You know, one thing that, one, one quality that danger, eminent danger has to do is it, it makes you think of necessities. When there's eminent danger, see Brother Jeremy and Sister Nikki, they've told us about it. There were some things that they just didn't worry about when the windows started breaking. And see, when you realize that the, the, the warfare that you're, that you're in and the enemy that you face, there are some things that just aren't worthy of your concern. And see, so the Lord has designed this, that Jesus would spoil the principalities and powers, but then he would leave them in the earth and he would work through them. And so now there are messengers of Satan that come to buffet us. He's been spoiled, but he has not yet been banished. Now's the spoiled day. There's coming a day that he'll be banished and we'll be done. That's when we'll beat our swords into plowshares. We won't, we will learn war no more. But now today we must, we must learn war. So 1 John 3, 8 says that he came to destroy the works of the devil. But then he left, he left the devil in the earth. His works have been destroyed. 
He's been frustrated. But he's left him in the devil, Listen, in the world. Listen to this. In the flesh, the devil is invincible. But in the spirit, the devil is impotent. Because he's spoiled. He's been spoiled. The principalities and powers have been spoiled. So you, you struggle with the devil in his territory, and he takes you every time. He's, he's invincible. But if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you resist him, he will flee from you because he's a spoil. Whom resist steadfast in the faith? What is it about your resisting that he can't deal with? It's because our Lord spoiled him. Resist him. Resist the devil steadfast in the face. Ephesians chapter 6 in the itemizing of the, the whole armor of God. Take up Above all, take up the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench most of the fiery darts of the wicked one. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. What can he do? What can he do if you quench all the fi of his fiery darts? What does he have left to do? He'll flee because he's spoiled. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 5, it says, verse 4, it says that weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. In other words, we don't, we're not in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the devil. Yeah. No, he's greater in power and in might. There's, just look at what he did to Job. We've got to think soberly about this. You know, I've heard, this is just a short bypath, but I, I've heard people address the devil while they're praying, and I'm not very comfortable with that. Amen. We resist. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds and to casting down of imaginations and bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So in our warfare, what can Satan do besides make suggestions? What did he do to Eve? When you boil it down, he really just made some suggestions. And because uh, Eve entertained the suggestions. She entered into dialogue and she handed over the advantage to the devil. She just handed the reins over to him and he drove from there. But when his suggestions are all brought into subjection, into the obedience of Christ, when they're cast down, that, see, it, dialogue with the devil leads nowhere good. He's to be resisted. The fiery darts are to be, are to be quenched and his thoughts are to be cast down. So how is it that, that, that it's in the power of men to thwart the efforts of the devil? The devil has, has not failed in any of his attempts save with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. With every other man that has drawn breath in the earth, the devil has triumphed. He has deceived. He has captivated He's brought them down, and now in the age of grace, we're quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked one, resisting, and he flees. We're casting down these imaginations. What, what has made our efforts so effective and what has made his efforts so, th so thwarted? It's because he has spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, and he triumphed over them in the cross. And so what's the conclusion to these things? Neither give place to the devil. Amen. Just don't, don't give place to the devil. He takes every place that he's given. Amen. Every opportunity. He's running to and fro about the earth. He's not, he's not uh, restricted and straightened by the limitations of time and space like we are. He runs through and, to and fro throughout the earth. And where there's a space, he enters. Where there's a place, he takes it. And so what, what shall we say to these things? Neither give place to the devil. Amen. And so when he comes by your house and he looks about, what's he doing? He's looking about for a place. He's looking about for somewhere to enter. <clears throat> but neither give place to the devil. And so what does he do? He goes on. He goes on to the next house looking for a place. So what is it? Why, did, why does he pass you by when he doesn't find a place? It's because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In conclusion to these things, Ephesians chapter 3. 
gives us an eternal perspective on the, on, the, on the purpose of God. That presently, Ephesians 3, verses 9 and 10. Presently, Paul is laboring to this end, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now, the fellowship of the mystery is Jesus' ministry. He's administrating the mystery of the kingdom. The fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, verse 10, to the intent... Now here he started at the beginning, the fellowship of the mystery has been hidden. Now he goes all the way to the end, the outcome of this grand project called redemption, to the intent that now under principalities and powers in heavenly places. Now let me pause right here. Principalities and powers in heavenly places here are not the principalities and powers that Jesus has spoiled. There are principalities and powers that fell with the devil. There was much of a third, remember in, in, the, in the, the poetic terms of Revelation, the, the dragon, he brought down a third of the stars with his tail. There are principalities and powers that we wrestle against in Ephesians chapter 6. There are principalities and powers that have been spoiled in Colossians chapter 2. Here in Ephesians chapter 3, to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, this is the gallery that the Lord is displaying. He's working salvation in the midst of the earth under the view of these principalities and powers. These principalities and powers are the heavenly gallery. Remember what Peter said? The angels long to look into these things. There's something about God in salvation that the angels haven't seen yet. There's something being displayed in the salvation of men, in redemption, that they haven't seen. They saw some of their race fall, and they, what happened after that? They were, they were, they've been reserved and chained unto everlasting judgment. But when men fell, then there is a go- there's a gospel. There's something, the Lord is opening something in the redemption of man that the angels haven't seen before. And frankly, it's intriguing to them. It's draw- they long, they desire to look into these things. Here's the answer. To the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And so what are the angels seeing when they look, these principalities and powers, when they're peering over the the gallery of heaven into these earthly places, so to speak, what do they see? They see the wisdom of God. They saw the power of God in creation, his eternal power and Godhead. They saw it displayed when God said, let there be light, and there was. When he said, let the waters be separated from the sea or from the ground, let the dry land appear, and it, and it was. Let there be day, let there be night, and it was. He saw the, they saw the power and of, of God displayed. But now that they're looking after the sun has come and spoiled the strong man in his house, now they're seeing wisdom. They're seeing the wisdom of God, something different than what they saw in the creation. They're seeing the wisdom of God, something different than what they saw when their brethren, the angels, fell. The angels longed to look into these things. And so, brethren, here, when you resist the devil and he flees from you, the angels rejoice because they see the wisdom of God. They see the wisdom of God. when they. It's like Gabriel says, says, look, they did it again. He resisted, and the devil fled again. And they, they're rejoicing to see the wisdom of God in this. And so, brethren, i leave you with this thought. Resist the devil, and he flees from you, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world.